and welcome to The Last Looks Podcast, a show where we catch up with talented hairstylists and makeup artists in the film and television industry. We'll pick their super creative brains and find out all the good stuff. Join me, your host, Jamie Lee, in finding out what's what in the hair and makeup departments around the world. And now, a word from our sponsor. Newsflash! Want to know how those Tinseltown starlets get those gleamy golden gams? How those sultry sirens light up the silver screen with that lit-from-within glow? How they get that gorgeous makeup to last all day and night? Well, gather round, because I've got the Botho news right here that's causing the paparazzi to buzz like bees. It's Melanie Mills Hollywood, of course. It's the secret of the red carpet, and now it's your secret, too. Pro makeup artist Melanie Mills developed these multi-purpose and multicultural products right from the makeup trailer on the set of smash hit Dancing with the Stars. From her amazing face and body radiances, a deliciously special sauce made up of a makeup, moisturizer, and glow all in one that comes in six stunning shades to her super light, long-lasting setting spray that holds those looks popping and keeps mouths dropping till the cows come home. This fine aerosol mist sets your makeup as easy as one, two, three. For flawless makeup applications, the Melanie Mills Hollywood Brush Collection is the answer to your prayers. These affordable, buttery soft vegan brushes are just what you need to sculpt, shape, highlight, and contour. Whatever the party calls for, Melody Mills Hollywood has you covered. And remember that all these gorgeous, cruelty-free vegan products are tested on celebrities, never on animals. MelanieMillsHollywood.com And now, our feature presentation. Today on the Last Docs podcast, I catch up with hairstylist Louisa Anthony. Louisa is not only a wonderful hairstylist, she is one of the most positive and supportive artists I've had the pleasure to work with. Louisa shares her journey, her passion for her work, and quite a few sound words of advice. So be sure to settle in and soak it all up. Catch you up. Last looks. Rolling. And action. Welcome to the Last Looks podcast, Louisa. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here, lady. Now, I would like you to finish the sentence for me, okay? Yes. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Louisa, and when she grew up, she wanted to be... She wanted to be healthy, loving, kind, successful, and... Fulfilled. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping you weren't expecting. Uh, I wanted to be a hairstylist. No, I was. I the answer is completely whatever you want it to be. Oh, um, but I'm curious. In the middle of all of those amazing things that little Louisa wanted to be, which is awesome, successful. So, did you know how you wanted to do that, or in what capacity? And not as a young child. No, but no. I guess my success, uh, I guess, was based on how I thought about success was accomplishment. Mm -hmm. If I had a goal and I could accomplish it to uh, my liking, yeah. then I would feel successful. That's awesome. So at no point were you kind of just like, because I know when I was, oh God, I think I was like four and I wanted to be a firefighter. And then at some point, I wanted to be a butcher and I think I only wanted to be a butcher because when we went to the butcher shop he always gave me a treat and I thought that that was amazing that um, is amazing. so I was just like I want to wear white boots and be a butcher and then like the the hairdressing stuff came much later on so do you remember the first thing that you kind of thought I want to do that when I grow up honestly I I never really I, I can't remember thinking about different types of careers that's cool on, yeah, while well, I was young. Yeah, I think that's uh, really nice. <laughs> I must have thought my I must have thought my parents were really wealthy, and I didn't have to work. I didn't have to work. <laughs> or it was just the, in the back of like the last thing you're thinking about, so, which is fantastic because you were just too busy going like living in the now and being a kid. I, yeah, it's pretty much how I felt. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a, I had uh, six brothers and sisters to to watch, so perhaps mm. that helped help guide my focus a little bit. I'm not yeah. sure. But... You're too busy to even think about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> A career. This this is a career right here, being the youngest. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. So going through high school and everything, like what what did you do once you left high school? Because I feel like just for everybody listening, I have worked with Louisa and I feel like she's the type of person that has had maybe two or three different lives before coming into the film industry. Like you have so many amazing stories of things that you've done through your life so and you come across people like you every now and again where it's just like oh my goodness you've lived like five different lives (laughs) it's so exciting (laughs) thank you well you know I have done a lot of things in my lifetime yeah and I think um being the youngest of uh seven children has you know created that type of space for me I've done a lot of traveling at a young age and I think that sort of opened up my uh, my mind to the possibilities of what life could be and uh, the different cultures and lifestyles and find myself somewhere out there in the big world. Yeah, it's very cool. So where, where in the middle of all of that does hairdressing jump in? How does that well, all start? Well, in the, I think it was the 80s, or was it the late 80s, there was a big uh, oil strike Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was working for the airlines, and I was traveling all over the world as a young woman, and having just a grand time. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, there was an oil and, and gas strike. Mm. And so we were laid off from our jobs. And, you know, I was young, and I thought, well, this is a good time to re, uh, you know, do something else, mm-hmm. you know, until that, until that happens again or not. And at the time, they were offering computer type education and beauty education yeah and I thought well computer education I I didn't know much about it it wasn't very popular and mainstream yet and I thought well I know a thing or two about beauty Mm -hmm. and I had two older sisters and I watched them you know do everything I thought was beautiful and I had a beautiful mother and I thought oh I you know i I think I I know a little about this. Yeah, know, yeah. But, and mm-hmm. so I was able to uh, get a, a sort of scholarship to uh, beauty college. I went to beauty school, and that's uh, where it all started in New York, New York City, Robert Fiance Beauty School. While I was uh, doing window display as a part time job, while I was going to school uh, for Macy's Thirty Fourth Street. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you were just yeah. being creative all around. I guess. Uh, uh, again, you know, I think it has a big, um, partly because of my family was so uh, artistic and I had all these uh, different avenues I could collect from all of my brothers and sisters. And one of my brothers was doing a display for a lot of shops on Fifth Avenue and Park Avenue. And I would mm. always go and assist him and so um, I knew a lot about it. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a difficult time finding a job because I was pretty well-rounded in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and I think just your you have such a positive outlook and it's um, infectious. So I'm sure every Thank time you. you went for an interview, they were just like, oh, yeah, I want to have her around. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I try. I am basically a happy, happy person. Yeah. And I try to focus on the positive things and work on the negative ones. Yeah. And so when you say beauty school, is that the same mm-hmm. as cosmetology school? Like, is it just hair stuff or is was it uh, all sorts it of things? Also, also makeup and nails, hair, oh, wow. uh, skin care. It, it covered everything. Yeah, yeah. It was a v- well-rounded course. Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, it all goes together, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> I guess and then yes. it, it, it kind of leads to the students going out into branching out into different avenues right like they're not all just going into a salon for hair they, right. could, they maybe become a nail technician or go and do makeup um, a makeup counter or like all sorts of different things yes that's correct and it, what happened with me was I uh, was studying most of them I was favored uh, in makeup 
mm-hmm. at the time. And when um, I moved to California, you know, to excel in my career, they gave me sort of an option. They said, well, you know, we have plenty of makeup people, but we are looking for hairstylists. And I thought to myself, well, I look no more, you know, I'm, <laughs> ta-da! <laughs> And so I went home and I rearranged my, my kit and, you know, all my equipment and um, I focused on hairstyling. Yeah. So who said that to you? Like, so what, what brought you to Los Angeles? What made you think I'm going to leave New York and go to the other side of the country? Well, um, the film business. Okay. I was very excited about going to Los Angeles to be in the film business. Oh, that's cool. But I had no idea how I was going to accomplish that because I was just out of school. Mm. And um, I didn't have uh, many cultivated skills yet, but I had a suitcase and a box of books. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try it. I yeah. got a ticket and I saved some money and I, I came to California. That's awesome. So while you're doing at beauty school, what made you think about trying to go down the TV and film road? Well, I I didn't want to be a hairstylist in a salon Mm -hmm. because I thought the film and television industry was much more exciting and Mm -hmm. it seemed so glamorous from outside. And the salon uh, work seemed more laborious and uh, not as uh, glamorous. It just seemed um, more uh, hard work and... um, I, it was an illusion, you know, for both, but it was just my perception at the time. I thought that the film and television medium was more exciting, and I wanted to go where the excitement was. I was yeah. the, the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> However, I I had to go into the salon as an apprentice in order to learn my skills mm-hmm. and get my skills up to par where I could actually work in the film and television business. So you did that in LA. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I was an apprentice in uh, Los Angeles for about a year. I started collecting photos and doing photo shoots and that type of thing. And I went on an interview with CBS, mm. had the big CBS complex there on Fairfax. And I thought, you know, I'd go back and forth uh, as I was an assistant. And I thought, oh, I want, I'm going to work there. Yeah. And uh, so I... Uh, I pursued uh, CBS and was granted an interview. And the woman took a liking to me and she said, well, you know, this is a union show and you only can hire union people, but I'm going to, uh, you I'm going to work with you. Mm -hmm. And she'd call me for a day here and a day there for about six months or not quite a year. Mm. And I'd start collecting my days. And um, then I got a show, The Young and the Restless. Ah. Yeah. Just, Everybody just knows like that, that show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, it, was, it was interesting because my uh, experience in the salon was mostly blow drying. Mm-hmm. And I got the job with the Young and the Restless because the lead female, Melody Thomas Scott, at the time had a very thick and uh, long hair. And mm-hmm. it was taking the hairstylist so long to blow dry the hair that wait, you know, she'd have to come in two hours early and, you know, there's, oh, how can we cut the time? And, you know, let's go, 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 go. And mm. when I came in, I blew dry her hair and had her set and ready to go to makeup, I think within 45 minutes. And they just thought I was the next best thing to slice bread. <laughs> and I wrote, <laughs> you know, I thought, well, all I did was blow dry and set it, you know, but okay, if that's, you know, if that's what you need, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. So that's, that's awesome. how I got my first job. That's cool. And I I haven't done work on anything like The Young and the Restless, but it's kind of different than normal television, isn't it? Like they shoot a lot quickly. They shoot. Yeah, they, yes, they do shoot a lot quickly, but I didn't know anything else. Yeah. That was no. my first introduction. I was elated because I was working uh, full time in a freelance world. So I thought, this is great. And I was working five days a week in a freelance world where you thought you'd work a day here and a day there and try to fill up your month. Yeah. But I, I just started right out working five days a week and we did cover uh, like uh, 10 pages a day or wow. something like that. Yeah. You must've gone on to something else after that and been like, why is everything taking so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, We're only going to do two and a half pages <laughs> in one whole day. What is happening? <laughs> 
someone told me, well, you know, it took two weeks to, to film, uh, you know, two minutes in Ben Hur, and I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think we've all now kind of been in those situations where it's just like, oh my god, the scene never ends. It's days and days of the same scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never, I never really, um, I never really thought that there was a short period of time when I thought, you know, things are taking forever, but mm. I didn't really get myself involved in that because I felt like that was a downward spiral to my energy. <laughs> yeah, um, You know, true. like people that's watch true. the clock, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people are watching the clock to get off. I'm thinking yeah. I'm in the wrong place if I'm watching the clock to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I think I do it not every day, but there are days that I tend to look at the time too much. Yeah, I and it's normally the you. days where it's going so slow. Like it feels like it's been three hours and it's been thirty minutes, and you're like, well, "What is happening?" <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> but you know, I always felt like you know, it's, the reasons are beyond me, and yeah. if I, you know, I can't even try to fathom what they are. But I'm just hoping that they're for the, all the right reasons. Yeah, and that that you know, there's no sense in putting less time in if the product is not going to be good. Yeah. So go ahead and do what you need to do. <laughs> you know, whatever that is. You know. Oh my uh, gosh, it's so funny because I even now I still I just keep asking the questions, and then I ask myself, why do you keep asking these questions? You about know, the time just about about time about anything like it'll just be like why are they doing it like this what is happening what are they thinking what is going on and it's just like stop asking stupid questions just be in the industry because it's full of craziness <laughs> <laughs> well yeah well I don't think it's so, so so stupid questions I just think that maybe you have perhaps a better way to do things you know, you're more <laughs> time efficient there are people who they could do it better you know they could do it better than uh the scheduling that's being done or the time that's being kept i know, you know but it's not you know time. it's not my business i just need to forget about it <laughs> <laughs> i think you could probably do they could probably benefit from your input i'm really not gonna do that <laughs> um, excuse me i'm just gonna cross to go over into the ad lane and say um I feel like this could be a little done a little better. Like, let's talk about it. No, that's not going to well, happen. <laughs> but it, but you know, it would be a great thing if they could open that door because there are times when we shoot the end of a scene hmm. that uh, entails dirt and blood and all this and yeah. distress, and then they turn around and want to do the beginning of the scene. Yeah, and we say to them, you know, it is so much better to start it at the beginning and then let it fall apart. Yeah, you know. So our input, I think, goes unrecognized. Yeah, I think in situations like that, absolutely, I'll, I'll say, hey, we should maybe, if it's possible, can we flip right. these around? If there are other big things, you know, you know, the reason why it's in this order, then I understand. But just so you know, if right. we do it this way, the changeover is going to be 30 minutes longer than if you yes. flip it the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they appreciate it. I think so. Yeah. They want to save time. Yeah. But they're not always open to changing their day around. But had they come <laughs> to you ahead of time, we could have avoided that. Yeah. But it's always a push, push. It seems to be a lot of haste. Oh, yeah. And sometimes with haste, you know, it makes a, a, a lot of waste. <laughs> but that's the na nature of the business. Lady, yeah, I they like could that just saying. <laughs> yeah, haste it makes rhymes waste. and everything. <laughs> I know you got it from some old person in my uh, family, somebody, some traditional, we've got lots of sayings. You know, but... I love it. That's awesome. So starting with Young and the Restless, which is amazing out of the gate, I'm sure you learned so much. Like it's a great training ground for, you know, the movie yes, world, right? I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I do think so. Um, I remember being on the set of the Young and the Restless and we're doing a huge um, ball or masquerade a type scene and thinking everyone's thinking you know we're going to submit this show for emmy and blah 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 and so everybody's trying to do their best mm. and uh, um and i reached over and i was talking to what i thought was someone who had been in the business i could respect their opinion mm. so you know if you had one thing to tell me you know along my my new career my beginning what would it be and mm. she said well I think to always stay humble to your craft 
Mm. And I thought, well, that's an amazing uh, jewel, you know, uh, to have because sometimes along the way, the ego and all of that get sort of in the way and it does um, close the doors to your willingness to learn and absorb and become, you know, as fully as you can. So I Mm -hmm. think that um, humility is a very good value a very good value yeah and to stay true to yourself and when you make mistakes learn from them and when possible make amends yeah and always try to have integrity integrity yes yeah (laughs) so those are some of the things that um i thought some advice that resonated with me absolutely i think it's um all good advice and some of it i think I don't know. Some people might be like, well, that's common sense, but it's just like, well, no, not always. And it's always nice to be reminded of these things as well. Yeah. Because often uh, when you're, you know, in the pace of it all, because mm. everything is, you know, there's not ever enough time to do all the grand things you, you have in your mind or in your vision. <laughs> yeah. So, so sometimes those things that seem like common sense are pushed aside because they're so common Mm. and uh, we need to keep them in the forefront so that you remain uh, at a certain level with yourself so when you go home you can sleep well at night yeah not not worried about uh, what you did or didn't do or what Mm -hmm. you said or didn't say and how that response may have attributed to something yeah yeah that's awesome (laughs) Just mindfulness, right? I think excellent. That's yeah. an excellent word for it. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Mindfulness about your, what, what you're there for mm. and what others are there for. Yeah. You know, because I think it's a balance. You can't give too much to your, to your own self, who is selfishness, mm. and you can't give too much to the outside because then you're lacking within. So you know, it's a good balance of uh, mindfulness for your own goals and aspirations and well-being as yeah. well as those for others. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, looking at your resume, you've done so much. So you've done you've done a nice mix of television and film as well. And I just wanted to kind of touch on a few of your favorites and why they kind of stand out to you as, as some faves. Yes. Well, presently, my favorite is a film I just finished called The Woman King. Oh, yeah. One of the reasons that film is one of my favorites is because it's based on a true story. Oh, yeah. And it's a story about African female warriors. And I just thought uh, it was, it's definitely one of my favorites, my most recent favorite, Mm. because I had never really thought or heard or read or discovered much about female warriors. Yeah. Until I had the small invitation to them on Black Panther with the Doras. Yeah. And this film, The Woman King, the Doras characters were based uh, on this true story oh, about wow. the female warriors. Yeah. That's cool. So it's, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> that yeah. we, and, and, and Black Panther was also one of the, my most favorite films to work on because I uh, was working with a friend of mine, as you know, yourself, yeah. uh, and also a uh, Camille friend. And I was able to give, I was given so much freedom mm-hmm. uh, to do so much that I just thought, this is so wonderful that, you know, just go and do, go and create. And I thought, oh, this is, this is right up my alley. I felt like I wasn't working at all. Yeah, and I was really uh, sort of in a moment that I really felt my full experience in life could come into these moments. That's very cool. And so, yeah. So you don't feel like you're really working at all when you're in your your um, element. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah, I think of that when you when you think back to that film and yeah, the just the creativity you're allowed to just yeah just create there's a saying (laughs) and I don't know how you guys say it over here but in New Zealand because we're crass um we'll tend to say um that you're like a pig in shit um (laughs) exactly that's exactly what it is it's like or we say like we can say uh you're like a kid in a candy store. A kid in a candy store. See, that's so much nicer than what I mean, you say. Kid in a candy store as well, but maybe it should be a pig in muck. If I would, uh, 
say it a little but, nicer. <laughs> I mean, but it doesn't matter because it just depends on, it all means the same, yeah? <laughs> yeah? It all means the same. It just depends on your audience. And you where know. was the Warrior film shot? It, it was shot in South Africa. Oh, that's which, amazing. Yeah, we were, I was there for five months. Wow. And um, it was an amazing adventure. It was tough and rough. Mm. but also uh, quite magnificent and amazing. I uh, had a hut once on one uh, shoot we were on in the uh, Zulu nation. Wow. And I had a hut that when I looked out of the window, mm. I could see at any time, I could see a giraffe walk by. I could see a, a pack of zebras go oh by. Oh, my God, lady, uh, that's so amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's like magical magicalness. <laughs> It really, it really, I mean, if you could just have that moment yeah. and not be worried about all kinds of other things, you, I actually felt like it was a dream. Yeah. You know, like something, a fantasy. Wow. It really was magnificent. That's I have so to say cool. that was one of my, yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. It's going to be a good film, I hope. I'm it sure it, it looks like be. a great film. The concept is amazing. Yeah. I mean, that in and, itself makes it great. <laughs> yeah. And being based on a true story, I think is always a nice thing to kind of sink your teeth into, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's nice when you can be entertained as well as given some history. Mm. You, know, you can be learned at the same time. You know, you can learn and be entertained at the same time is, is quite a pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. And so within all the creative styles and everything that you've done throughout your career, is there an all-time favorite look that you've created? Uh, yes. I had the wonderful opportunity of working with Glenn Close on Guardians of the Galaxy, a oh, Marvel yeah. cool. film. She sent her, her wig ahead and she sent some ideas about what she wanted. And I was able to just take that hair piece and, okay, you go and work on this hair piece. Mm -hmm. I think it, it took two days to uh, put this hair piece together. And I think that was one of my favorite hairstyles because I felt like I had the time to actually create something and not be rushed and panicked about it. Mm -hmm. And also the actor, mm -hmm. you know, Glenn Close was just... Uh, a gem. I mean, she was, uh, I, I remember, you know, clearing the trailer and making sure everything was pristine and clean and neat and, uh, you know, sweeping and cleaning. And, you know, after I'd finished <laughs> my hair piece, I wanted to make sure that when she stepped in that trailer, that she would be in an environment that she was accustomed to and one that she deserved. Yeah. And I just had an amazing experience doing that hair piece and working with her for uh, just a few days was one of the highlights of my career. That's very cool. It's so nice to also meet someone that's done such amazing work throughout their career and have a great experience with them. Yes. Well, you know, I do believe that human beings Actors included, <laughs> mm. <laughs> are, um, uh, as long as they're getting what they want, you know, it's a very healthy, positive environment. Yeah. And so I felt confident that she was pleased with um, the outcome. So things remain just on a very good high note. Had it gone another direction, perhaps it would be different. Yeah, I'm sure. That's always the possibility. <laughs> you can yeah. always go the other way. Yeah, so I, I recall once, you know, having a hairpiece, it would just roll down the trail, and I thought, I would never do that, you know. But someone else, they, I, I, they just couldn't take it anymore. They just took the hairpiece, took the uh, the wig on the head, and just rolled it down the, the trail. And I thought, okay, that's one way, that's, that's one way to deal with it. It's you like know? the. Uh, obviously not communicating with the hairpiece. Um, no. There's a communication breakdown and somebody's and lost breakdown. it. Yes. And, you know, I always thought, like, my father was, uh, you know, he wouldn't let anything beat him. He was always a challenging, you mm. know, was always, I'm going to get work this out. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. And I think I have a lot of that um, in me because I'm more, I get, I dig in when it's more challenging yeah. Something is more challenging. I I'm like, okay, I'm out. For, I'm up for this challenge. You yeah. know, it just makes me the, the adrenaline, you know, go. 
Yeah. I think I can get like that, but also sometimes I need to step away just for a minute to breathe and go back into it with fresher, with fresh eyes sometimes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And I have, I have been busted talking to wigs before. I'm going to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, I was giving you all the answers that you want, right? Hopefully. <laughs> they don't talk back. I'm just talking at them. I'm like, okay, now listen, this is how this is going to go. If you're going to allow me to go. do this, this is the outcome we need. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. you got to put it on there. Yeah. Yes. And then no, it's I like, it. Jamie Lee, are you talking to that wig? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because the the wig basically is becoming like a reflection of your <laughs> thoughts, your talents, your techniques, you know. So why not have a good rapport with it? Yeah, yeah. we got to be on the same page, right? And we always call it something, you know. We call it, it, become, it has a name, you know, it, it has a personality. <laughs> oh, I want her to look sexy. I want her to look, you know, demure, whatever it is. I mean, so it, you know, we're actually creating that uh, character it just ha- doesn't have the human being with it yet yeah that's awesome <laughs> love it it makes sense <laughs> it does and what what are some of the things that you find the most rewarding in our line of work I think what's most rewarding to me is when you see your vision coming it being rolled out you know when it's in the works mm-hmm. that's so rewarding everything is getting done okay this is this is happening okay I can see it I know it and oh I'm feeling good about it and then to see uh it actually uh the vision actually come to the screen or be on set or be on stage Mm. uh is quite fulfilling I think that would be yeah I think I'm the same and it's kind of like because it all happens in bits and pieces Yes. And you, you have those conversations with other people and then you do your own little tests and it's all kind of fragmented. And then when it finally all comes together and you're on set and there's the picture cars and the costume and the background yes. and the, and you're like, ah, ah <laughs> you know, you're, I mean, you're, I'm, the smile on my face is huge, you know, because yeah. I can see all those little, uh, pieces like you say coming together and they're making yeah. such a big a big statement and it's it's, uh, it's the beauty of what we do you know when all those little parts come together at a certain moment and it's just there and you can just be in awe of that magic yeah that's very cool and what do you find to be the most challenging I think for me is keeping my calm when I see the vision happening right. because it's so exuberant and you're so excited oh you know you're just uh, uh salivating in it that it's all happening and it's so much adrenaline um so it's challenging trying to maintain the calm of it uh and not look like a uh you know a raving lunatic uh, <laughs> clapping and screaming and jumping that it's actually happening and it's what you want it to be and it's everyone is happy with it you know, happy with your work and happy with all the things that it took to make it happen. And yeah. it's just uh, so fulfilling and rewarding. It's, to, uh... <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I think I, I let it out sometimes and I'm just like, oh, this is so cool. Um, I know. And, but then other times I think I must be keeping my chill exterior so, so much <laughs> That And I didn't realize that I did that until I was working with um, a particular actress and she was very conscious, just a very conscious actress, I think, professional, Mm. just, you know, would give you the time that, you know, everybody needed on set to kind of do their thing for last looks and all that type of stuff. And if I had just stepped back after I'd finished and other people were still working and just kind of looking to make sure, you know, it's all looking good because that one little minute of step back. Oh yeah. Yep. You're good. Um, and she'd look me right in the eye and she could never tell whether (laughs) something I was concerned about something or happy about something. And she'd be like, are you good? 
Uh, and, and, and I was just being like, I'm, yeah, yeah, it's great. And she's like, okay, great. Like she just, she always kind of would check in with me when she could see this intense kind of look on my look, face. And most yes. of the time it was, it was happiness, but yes. I was trying, I would, you know, con- I just got so used to containing it um, and just, you know, giving that look and checking her out and then walking away. But she always wanted to check in with me to be like, happy, are you good? <laughs> But, you know, what What an enormous amount of respect um, that the actress had for you. Yeah, we, I mean, we did have a good relationship. In. Yeah, so she, if I was happy, she was happy, which is the normal, normally I'm like, I'm happy if you're happy. And she's like, no, no, if you're happy, <laughs> I'm happy. And I'll just be like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> I love this, right? Yeah. The tables have turned. But, you know, it's that moment, uh, Jamie, in your career where your um your skills and your experience and your uh your excellence come together and uh, they getting the respect that you deserve <laughs> you know it's that moment that that aha moment like i, I it's happening you know, all the hard work all the technical uh, all the classes all the late nights all the practice is uh, actually in that moment coming all together with the respect and and admiration that you deserve yeah I mean it's just that's nice a, that's to... an amazing point to be in <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to feel like a, a yeah it's feeling like a real kind of team yes team effort so that's very cool yeah I think it's amazing yeah, because we I think it's important for us to have the moments where it's it's a it's a positive ego check where um, you're saying that I've, I've done a good job. You know, I'm confident and I'm satisfied with the job that I've done, although I, there's always room for improvement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm ever happy, but, you know, I don't know if you're the same. Are you the same? Do you just kind of, I mean, I don't know. I want to find happiness yeah. in when I feel I've done my best. Yeah. But, like, that's why I left the door open to say, that there's always room for improvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. You know, but I do want to feel some happiness or some satisfaction from what I did deliver or what I did accomplish. Yeah. You know, that's very cool. For myself. Of course. You know, because um, but this is the only solid foundation I have because I'm not, um, I don't have the control over what other others think. Although I'm hoping uh, we're on the same path and we're on the same uh line of communication and joy yeah or what others want because most of the time we're providing what other people are wanting from us yes and i do find myself in times of someone saying you know be on set and they'll be like it looks so great and and i my mind is going i don't like it but (laughs) everyone seems to be happy with it so that's great and yes. you, you find your happiness in that, that everyone's, it's just like, well, it's not my cup of tea and I wouldn't have gone in this direction, but it's what the boss wants. It's what the boss gets. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, you know, that took, uh, that takes experience and wisdom, you know, uh, because you have to get to some point where even it's not, it's not your it wasn't your decision, mm. you know, uh, wasn't, uh, so if I'm, uh, fulfilling the directors, you know, what they want or what the actor wants, mm. then I've done a good job and I want to feel happy about it because yeah. it wasn't my choice. And I don't want to, sw- I don't want to wallow in, I would have gone a different way because uh, no. had they wanted something different, maybe they'd ask for a choice. Yeah. Then I could display other things, maybe put my twist on it. Mm. But uh, since they didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I've accomplished that goal by giving them what they want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can go home and decide what I want. You know, I have yeah. a home to go to. <laughs> exactly. Somebody said to me the other day, and I thought it was a really great way to explain it, like to to label it. It was that we we are facilitators, like we're there to facilitate. Yes other other people's um visions and things like that and we get to throw our own stuff in the mix as well um but 
all in all, to stop yourself from, you know, getting down about it or angry or negative is to, we are there to serve a purpose for for others, really. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's a service business, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So um, we're here to uh, provide a service uh, into the vision that they want to portray. Yeah. So, Very cool. you know, that's it. I, I think you're doing an excellent job. I love your work. <laughs> oh, lady, stop I did it. from the very start. No, from the very start. From the very start. You know? And um, I know sometimes it's hard for some people to uh, take compliments, but <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I'm in awe of your work. Lady, and, stop. Um, I think, I think it, you know, I love being around you because it makes me so much better. Because I look at your work and I think, Louisa, go back over there. And do that again. <laughs> oh my God, stop it! You're too funny. <laughs> That's the truth, you know. I'm you. Being around you makes someone else great. <laughs> you're Check a, you're... that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, go and edit that out. No. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to move on now, Louisa, because you've yes, made me blush you. beyond. <laughs> you know, it's well, ridiculous. Truth be told, you know how red <laughs> this skin goes. Now. <laughs> It you takes me a, a second and I just go completely pink. What I would like to know is, do you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? Well, I think I'm a bit of both, mm -hmm. but I'm probably more of an extrovert than an introvert because I'm more of an extrovert when I'm feeling confident and feeling good about my environment and myself in that environment. Yeah. And that's the type of space I prefer. So I'm mostly that, but there are times when I'm a bit of an introvert, when I'm, I'm not in an environment that is conducive to my well-being yeah. and to my, what I can, what I have to offer. And so I become with, you know, an introvert in those moments and yeah, just quickly it. get out of there. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> it's, it's not, well, it's not who I, I want to be. You know, it's not my best self. Yeah. And when you are feeling more extrovert, how does, how do you think that affects you in our industry? What kind of effects well, do you think it has? I think it's a positive effect because it's a people business mm. and, you know, we have to be able to be confident and communicate with directors and producers and writers and actors. Mm. So I think it's um, important that you're able to, have a good self-image and self-esteem and uh, not a, not fearful to uh, speak up and share your, your gifts and your concerns with others. Yeah, it's nice. So I, I think, think um, yeah, I think it's best uh, to be more of an extrovert so that you can place on someone who you, um, a, a bit of who you are and what you can bring mm -hmm. as opposed to an introvert, which sometimes uh, more difficult to explain and people don't want to take the time to get to know. Right. So you may get, uh, you know, passed over or overlooked because they have an expression uh, in the old days called uh, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, so someone who's a bit more outspoken perhaps uh, gets more recognition or attention. So it, there's a balance in everything, hopefully, but I would You don't want to be too squeaky, but you don't want to be too quiet. <laughs> right. It's just a balance, yeah. It's yeah. a life is a balance of it, you know. So, and know when to be quiet and when to uh, speak up. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that comes with wisdom and experience. Exactly. And when you're putting a team together for a job, Louisa, what, what are you kind of looking for in your team members? I think the first thing I'm looking for is integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second thing would be skill. And the third thing would be the ability to get along with others. Yeah. So I think you have a good solid base of your, who you are mm. and what you're, you know, uh, is very, uh, is very important. And then of course we've got to get the job done. So yeah. it's got to have a certain level of skill. And, um, of course, one person can't do it all. So you have to be able to get along with others and work as a team. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I think for anyone lucky enough to work with you, Louisa, you are incredibly supportive, which is really nice to come across in our industry. Well, so. well thank you. You know, I, yeah, I think that um, it's, I always hope that someone is able or in an environment that they can do their best. Mm. And sometimes being supportive of someone is helping that person do their best because they have the support that they need while they're going through some times that may be difficult for them or some places that they're still trying to work out. You know, support is so important. Yeah. Because most people will get to where they want to be as long as they can continue to stay afloat and don't become consumed with the negative thought or the distraction or whatever it is that uh, is holding them back from achieving the goal. Yeah. That's we, awesome. you know, we need support. Yeah. yeah it's well it's Thank it's you. it's such a I mean it is such a simple thing that you can do for other people but so many people don't and I, it might be it, it's a mixture of things it's just it, we do work in such a busy sometimes chaotic environment working with people maybe that we don't know very mm-hmm. well at the beginning yeah. but I know for me the first time working with you coming into a, a crew I knew nobody you were just like the light of my day because you were so supportive and just there immediately. And it's so nice to have have that when you start a new job in a new place and you don't know anybody. And then there's oh, Louisa and she's so oh, friendly and so supportive <laughs> and it's just really nice. So makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you know, we are going to be a team yeah. and, you know, we want the best for everyone. Mm. And I think the support is very important. Like you say, when you come into an environment and you have fears about what people think, what people say, what people do, how they work, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, um, it's frightening mm. and it can stifle your, uh, your talents. And we don't want that. We no. want all the talent out there. You know? <laughs> you know, we want to pull back on talent, not try to, you know, we want all the talent on the floor, but mm-hmm. all hands on deck and do what you do best. And uh, we can all be so happy. Yeah. Because I mean, people do work better when they feel supported. So it's, yes, it makes, it makes sense. And what kind of project have you not worked on that you would like to? I was thinking about that question and I mm-hmm. thought, Perhaps it might be something like a one woman or one man show. Oh, where yeah. They go through all these different types of characters and mm-hmm. you're just able to create all those different looks for one person could be quite exciting uh, as yeah. opposed to creating all the different types of characters for many different people in yeah. one project. Just to sort of flip it around a bit and create a lot of different characters for just one actor would yeah. be exciting I think that'd be cool yeah I mean I'm, yeah just yeah oh my goodness that would be cool I mean there's some specific actors that kind of have done that in the past haven't they yes that play multiple yes. characters in the in the same same thing so I mean put it out there lady you've seen yeah it. well <laughs> yes. yeah I mean I it, it seems like a challenge that would be uh the end result of the vision the, the achievement of it would probably be a really great piece of work because not only does it, is it displaying all the great things in that actor mm. all the different characters they can play but also displaying all the different talents that one might have in creating those different characters from a hair stylist perspective yeah yeah that's very cool when we were talking earlier about little louisa who i'm sure was adorable um thank you so much (laughs) (laughs) and just thinking about success and now to where you are in your career and life how do you define success in your work now i define success in my performance or my achievement uh, what uh, how did i perform in this goal mm-hmm. and was i able to achieve what i wanted out of it and what the people that i was working for wanted out of it mm-hmm. and also when you see the vision coming to fruition that mm-hmm. is success 
So I define success in performance, achievement, and the fruition of the vision. That's cool. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a good answer. It's um, yeah, it's inspiring. I like it. And I I have to ask that after years of experience and all the jobs that you've done and all the situations you've been in on set or in our industry, what's one thing you wish? someone had told you before you got into this field? I think it's the amount of time Mm. that passes and goes into a project or into your career. Yeah. I would have never thought that it was so much time goes into one day or one project or Mm. into one career. Yeah. The The hours that we put in. Yeah. And the days and the months and the years. Yeah, I had no um, idea either. <laughs> it's mind blowing. It's mind yeah. blowing. <laughs> I mean, I knew yeah. that when I worked in the salon, like I, I felt like those were long days, like when you'd have late nights and stuff like that. But oh my god, it's nothing on. <laughs> no, no, because at least in the salon, you can say, "Okay, I'm ready to stop," and you can stop. Yeah. But, you know, on the set, you're just going to the end, and somebody else tells you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so on somebody else's clock, it's a bit different, but. Um, it's a lot of time and yeah. it goes really quickly. Although mm. on the set, as you said, it seems slowly, mm. but honestly, my career has passed. The years have gone so quickly already. It's another year. It's another year. It's five years. It's 10 years. It's more than 25 years. And I'm still feeling like there's just so much more for me to do Yeah, and uh, get excited about. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think so. You have to re, you know, we keep challenging myself yeah. to something in within my industry. Yeah, uh, keeps it exciting. Oh, absolutely. I don't want to get out of here before I'm ready to get out. So I've got to keep myself, you know, excited about being there. Yeah. Or else it's time for me to move on. Yeah. And it makes for you to be a more enjoyable person to work with is when you're excited about it as well. I think when people are over it, it's just like not fun to work with them. <laughs> not at all. I mean, it takes your energy. Yeah. You know, coming into a person that's always complaining about the work that you're here to do. Yeah. It's either they need a, a, a nice long vacation or yes. they need to just get out. Some therapy. Yeah. Switch it out. <laughs> You change your mindset, your change your job, or have a holiday. One of those things. <laughs> All of the above, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All know? of the above. That's so true. All of the above. Because <laughs> you know, it's very, it's so important to have time for yourself and mm. rewind and reset goals and you know energy and such because yeah. you can get into a sort of a conveyor belt that just keeps going, you know, round and round. Yeah, got to have that work-life balance, right? Yes, yes. A work-life balance with what you want to achieve in your personal life aside from work. Mm. That's the challenge, the balance of the two. You know, when to say I'm taking this week off regardless because, you know, something important is happening and you want to be a part of it. Yeah. And, the, you know, the balance to say, no, you know, I'm going to see this to the end. And when it's done, I'll take a vacation. Yeah. You know, so knowing when and what uh, is important to you and staying true to yourself and sticking to your guns, because it's in your belief that everything is going to work out for you. You're not going to be hungry. You're not going to be homeless. You're not going to be without if I say no. Yeah. But also, I don't know, plan ahead and to make sure that does, isn't the case. You know, save yes. some money, guys. Save some money so you can have a break. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, my uh, my father was always like, okay, you you always have to save money mm. because when you're ready to to say you need a break or mm. need to go on holiday or just mm. sit down and, and rest, you can. Yeah. Nobody has that power over you. Mm. So this is you always have to make sure you're saving your money. But that's not to say you're depriving yourself along the way, unless it's just an immediate goal. And then we could, you know, deal with that. But on a regular in your life, save, save some money and enjoy yourself. Don't deprive yourself of things. But at the same time, don't, don't be wasteful. Be mindful of the future. Yeah. Good advice. That's very true. (laughs) I mean, it takes, sometimes it takes a long time to figure it out. 
It like, does. I, I mean, I've always, I've always been a saver because that's just how I'm kind of built. And I think in, when you're doing an apprenticeship and like earning like no money, um, right. back in the back in the day, I had to like I had to save to you know if I wanted to, to survive, buy anything right? or yeah I, you know had to count those dollars. So yes. that's just kind of in in my brain anyway. And then getting into the film industry in New Zealand, it wasn't there wasn't job after job after job to go on to. So you'd finish a film job and then I'd go back part-time to barbershop or to the salon or something. And, you know, so the, the money was kind of ebbs and flows type of thing. So you would learn to, I would learn to save while I was on the film job full-time. So then I could just do part-time work in between. Yes. No, I think it's amazing homework for everyone Yeah. to learn, to learn that. But then when I moved to the States and started getting busier and busier and realizing that there's always stuff being made <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I watched people just say yes, yes, yes to everything. And even when they would finish a full-time job and they'd have like two weeks in between their next job, they'd be day playing. Like they just didn't yeah. stop. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I thought that it was crazy, but then I still found myself, there was one year that I kind of <laughs> did that and I got to the end of the year and I was so exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah, exhausted. Yeah. And no, to I the know. point, and I hate that I even thought this, but to the point of going, I don't think I can do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, you just and broke I, out now. Yeah, I, I was, yeah. yeah. It was just, I was exactly. like, I can't, I can't, I don't think I can do this anymore. Like, I didn't think I, I was even good get out at of it. My bed like, I didn't think I was good at it. I didn't think I should be doing it. I thought it was all just bad and terrible. And I was just like, oh, okay. And it just took a little minute over that kind of that Christmas break to go, no, I need to learn to say no yes. to some stuff. Yes. <laughs> And, you know, the thing is, is that when I think when a person sort of freelances mm. and they don't have, you know, a job, a nine to five type job, mm. there is that um, thought that they have to take everything yeah. because they don't know when something else is coming. Yeah. But it's an unfortunate mindset mm. because it could set you up to fail. Like you say, you felt burnt out as opposed to saying, well, this came to me. Why wouldn't something something else come to me? Mm. Or why can't I seek? Just like I sought this, I could seek something else. But now is the the time to take rest, or be with family, or take a break, or those kind of things. But um, money plays a big role mm. in it. And if you can live your life in a balanced way, where you're not overextending your finances, perhaps one doesn't feel the need to go from job to job to job to job yeah you know, and there's a there's a could be a financial reason it could be an emotional reason it could be a psychological reason why a person is just going round and round like that mm. so depending on what it is at the time it can sort of try to help you help ourselves yeah it's definitely worth thinking about i mean it, it, i i'm thankful that i got kind of got to that point to figure it out because now yes. yeah it's much more enjoyable and, for me so and, much, and you're going to say no because you yeah. know what the end is if you if we don't mm. and we don't want to be at that other end <laughs> no. and i know i just know myself as well that i'm not very good at work-life balance when i'm working like in yes. that job in that project i am 100 percent like in it Yes. So I know that when it finishes, I need to have a time, time. where I'm 100% like into my life. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, so... I mean, that seems like the, that seems like where I would want to be as well. I want to show up to my job, my project coming with a hundred and so percent to offer that day. Mm. And then when I'm finished a hundred and so percent to offer to myself, for rest and restore and rebuild, you know, and uh, we reset my, my clock and my balance because that to me, that's balance, you know, yeah. where you can, and you're giving your each, each side of the spectrum the most, mm -hmm. you're giving that project the most because you're in it a hundred percent and you're giving yourself the most back when you're done with it and you put it 
in yourself. Yeah. And uh, to, be, an to, be, to be honest, when I'm working, I don't have time to spend money. So yeah. it just naturally kind of saves anyway because yeah, I'm too busy working. <laughs> yeah. There's no time for that later. Yeah. Put it in the bank. No, put it in the bank. Spend it later. <laughs> isn't that a great way to be? Like you could just be at a point in your life where you have enough money to live and you have enough mm-hmm. money uh, to get things done and not have to worry about it and save it so that you can have some stash and at the end have money to go and enjoy yourself yeah it's a uh, it's a win-win situation when it's working this way yeah it's very true now louisa i want you to be Mm. in your trailer i want you to visualize in your trailer you've got your station set up you've got all your bits and pieces and if i came in and i took one tool or product away from you what would you freak out about if I took it away from you? What would you not want to be without? Well, my first my first answer to that question mm. was my willingness. <laughs> but... <laughs> I can't take that away. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have that. And then I thought, my second thought was, I don't want you to take my tail comb. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I completely understand. <laughs> you know yeah uh, those were the two things that I just don't want to do without but I do knew you... you were talking about an implement or a yeah. product but I thought <laughs> I, when I I you know I can't do it without willingness you know mm. but um yeah the what about comb. you what's your I think uh, well tail comb's pretty close up there because I and I also am so fussy that I have a specific type of tail comb that I like to use so when somebody else hands me a different type of tail comb, I'm like, what is this? What well, are you like, oh, I can't, if, yeah. like, I can't work with this. I mean, I can, of course, if I had to, but I'm I like, could. where's I my tail before. comb? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the type of tail comb, like it's the first tail comb I ever used. So it's like, yeah. like it's the, it's the same brand for, oh God, a ridiculous amount of years that I don't want to say, but Yeah. <laughs> So no, I get. I it. love my tail comb. Don't do it. It's, you're checking for it, uh, like we check for our cell phones now. You have your cell phone. You know, it used to be you have your wallet. You have your keys. Now it's cell phone. And also, you know, before you go to set, I have my tail comb. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm a like tail comb and hairspray. Like I it's, feel like if those were taken away from me, I'd be a little bit lost. I'm sure I could work it out, but. You work it out, but you don't want to have to. No. And I thought, well, tail comb and uh, hair thickener. uh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) Nice. And um, what one person would you like to hear on the podcast? I was thinking about this. And I thought, what about Jamika Wilson? I know Jamika. I don't know her, but I know who she is. I had her on for um, when I do my Oscars. Oh, yes. Annual Oscars one. So I sp- No, I forgot. I did speak to her on there. But, yeah, one, just a solo interview with her would be great. Yeah. Because, I'll have to um, harass I'm, her. <laughs> yeah, no. I'll help you. You tell me when you want to go get it. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll put in some uh, some calls and some texts, too. Okay, um, good. But, uh, no, I just think she's got an awesome uh, – one uh with uh, her being new in the business and mm. having had that the client that she has and this um amazing career in this business in just such a short period of time yeah i think would be cool. uh, an interesting interview yeah that's because awesome. uh, uh most people want that type of uh you know experience but often it takes a lot longer to acquire although she was doing things outside of here yeah. before you know to bring it to this point but mm. um, yeah so that's awesome well louisa i have of course every time i love talking to you so um thank you for coming on the show i thank you fully appreciate it i love it thank you thank you thank you it is my pleasure <laughs> thank you For links to see more about our guests, go to our Instagram at The Last Looks Podcast or our website, thelastlookspodcast.com. If you want to keep up with new episodes being released, be sure to subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, YouTube, or any podcast streaming platform. And remember, if you're enjoying the show, share it. The Last Looks Podcast would like to thank Brett Stanley and Sabrina Castro. The song Fun Time by DJ Quads. Thanks for listening. Until next time.
That's a wrap, people. 